Shield Financial Group offers entrepreneurs from all backgrounds the opportunity to start their own business on a level playing field. Dr. Yana Woodhouse, receiving the WCM Wall Street Pioneer Award by the United Black Wall Street of America, Inc., is one of those entrepreneurs. I see WFG and TFA as a place where African Americans with an entrepreneurial mindset can flourish. And the bonus, we help families and serve the communities across the country. To learn more about us, go to worldfinancialgroup.com. We are the sons and daughters of the soul. We are resilient and forever forward thinking. We ask for nothing else than the opportunity to live and to create the lives that we were meant to live. We want nothing but an equal chance at options and possibilities. The same possibilities and options to live out our potential as our fellow man. We want to be heard, understood, and expressive in our reality. We are the future. We are the creator. We are here. Happy Monday, everyone, and welcome to The Bold Show with me, your host, Marie Dunn. It is always a pleasure to be in this space to talk about our stories, to hear your stories, and also to remind you that we are all resilient and everything that we need to get us through lives within us, but we have to recognize that. And until you do, I am so sorry you're at a disadvantage, but it's all possible. Believe you can, have faith, and be willing to do the work and you, should, you will definitely get through the process. Trust the process and remember there are no shortcuts. Success, it's difficult, it's not easy. I don't care who tell you that it is easy. And a lot of times we see the end results, but we never understand the stories behind it and how we got there because there is a story, right? So today I'm super excited like I always am to sit and talk to resilient folks, to talk to folks who have an abundant mindset, to talk to folks who have faith and hope and know that it's all possible. Today, I'm here with the one and only author and advocate, Kevin Blaze. Kevin has a powerful story. That's gonna make you say, wow. But something so profound about this gentleman when I met him was just like really talking about that inequity in home ownership among our race. So welcome, Kevin. It's a pleasure. Thank you for being a part of The Bold Show. Oh, thank you for having me, Maria. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a pleasure. So I know I gave folks the short version of who you are. Now I want you to like really take the time to introduce yourself and tell us who you are. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Kevin Blaze. I'm an author. I reside uh, between Pennsylvania and Brooklyn, New York. Um, I launched my book in April of 2021, and I've been getting some great reviews on the book, uh, and it's been doing pretty well. Um, I'm an uh, independent author, and I'm self-published. I'm not on any of the major um, sites such as Amazon or Barnes and Nobles, everything I do is 100% independent. I um, distribute distribute my own books, print my own books, and everything is 100% independent. Um, and we're pushing hard, man. I'm trying to get the younger folks to open their eyes to the home ownership process, as well as folks who are older in age, but um, that weren't taught the process. I'm trying to get it for them to open their eyes also because it's a very important part of our life and we're not being educated on it um i started writing 
the home buyers book in 2018 i want to say 2019 i want to say and i put it on the market last year 2021 and we've been getting great reviews on it as far as myself i never thought i would be a writer i didn't have that intention when i was uh growing up um i worked construction for a lot of years and um transferred over to new york city transit um later on and um i'm still there today but uh pretty simple pretty simple guy i go to work i like to hang out and um majority of my time right now is being taken up by my books that's what i'm putting 100 percent of my effort into is my books awesome thank you so much for that wonderful introduction but i'm going to tell you something there is nothing pretty simple about who you are it takes a lot of courage and it takes so much to want to put yourself out there and be so vulnerable because this is an art and we live in a society and are so judgmental and it's so easy for us to point fingers at each other and say what we're doing and what we're not doing and also want to tell us how to show up. Right. And you were able to rise above that. So there's nothing simple about that. Okay. Thank you. I want you to own it. And um, something that you said, it's a quote from you, and I'm going to read it directly because I don't want to mess it up. It says, information is power. And a lot of us want the information and do not know where to turn to receive it. We are changing this and changing history. That is powerful because I know knowledge is power and information is freeing. Because once you know, it's such a sense of liberation. So before we get into the creation of your book, talk to me about what led you to the point of writing this book? How did we get here? Uh, honestly, by chance. Uh, it wasn't an intention of mine at all. I, I don't. When we met, you know, I had two of my books on display. I had my fictional book, and I had the uh, information book. The fictional book, I signed up for a class uh, to learn how to market the book because I didn't know anything about marketing. I just knew I had an amazing story because I had, re I had read it so many times and I used to read a lot. So I knew I pretty much had an idea of what was, what to me, what was good and what wasn't good. So I signed up for this class with uh, my guy, Sean Blanchard. And uh, at that time, the class was $997. So call it a thousand dollars. I went into the class to learn how to market my fictional book. But when I got into the class, every author in there was had a, um, a pain book, how to uplift yourself. And I'm saying to myself, oh, man, did I waste my thousand dollars? Because my book was fictional. <laughs> it had nothing to do with what they were talking about in the class. And I, so I, I stuck with the first session and he was going around to uh, every author for them to talk about their book. And that was the first time I had pitched my book to anybody. So I made my pitch of my fictional book and it was just silence. Like it was a horrible pitch. You could tell that nobody was feeling my 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 book from the way that i explained it so uh, i'm sitting there and i'm like wow damn what am i gonna do am I, I, I but the thing that i that kept me going was i knew i had an amazing story in that fictional book so i stuck with the class and as the class went on i started to say all right this is no longer about the fictional book i had an idea i i, I was doing uh credit repair at the time so i had that experience I had the home buyer's experience what was good and bad and i started thinking you know i can put this out there as well as to go in, along the lines of what this class is doing i start my brain started racing and saying you know i can join this class outside of my fictional book and i also had the home buyer and i also had the real estate experience so that i put the pen to paper and it just blossomed into something else but it was by accident it wasn't in, intentional at all <laughs> so Thank you so much for sharing that. But the older me, the matured me, have come to realize that nothing is really an accident. We think right. it's an accident. Right. <laughs> um, I believe 
in divine intervention. And I believe, mm -hmm. I don't really believe in coincidences anymore. Mm -hmm. I think that everything, every experience that we go through in life was meant to be, because yes. it's also preparing us for the next chapter in our lives. Agreed, 100%. Sometimes we talk about our past and we're like, we wish we could erase it. We wish we never have experienced it because it's so bad, it's so negative, and it was so overwhelming. But your past is necessary. Right. Without a past, you don't have a future. Right. But right. it's totally up to you how you want to internalize that and how you want to move past that. Mm. That's the operative word here, moving past whatever negative experience you may have had. Because I also believe that sometimes we ask God, I'm very spiritual, pardon right. me for not. Sometimes we ask God and we sit and we're like, we want, we pray and we ask him for these things, whatever these things are. But then I think for me, it's a part of the process that you have to go through certain experiences mm -hmm. because he's testing you to see if number one, if you're ready, if you're deserving, and if you can manage that success when you get there. Right. Because if you don't have that mentality, if you don't understand what it is to want, I don't think you will know how to appreciate when you have. Mm. I remember coming into this country um, back in 2001. I kid you not. I had $20 in my, po in my pocket. $20, I was undocumented, but I had a plan. Right. And I was going to make it work. And I never gave up. Right. I knew I had to make sacrifices and I had to work hard for what it is I want. Right. It wasn't going to come overnight. But because I had that experience initially, now I know how to appreciate the value of money, the mm. value of my time. And we're going to have more conversation about, you know, home ownership and what that looks like and the intricate details. But what I love about, what I loved about your book, I hope everybody can see it, right? Black in America, 18 to 40 years and still no house. Why is it taking us so long? I love the simplicity of this book. When I started reading it, I was like, where was this book when I was trying to buy my house? I wish I had this book. <laughs> I've heard that so many so times. <laughs> it's, you know, it's like literally, you took away the jargon from it to make it so simple so we could understand it. Right. It was so easy for me to digest the information in here. And you walked us through from the pre-approval um, process up to the closing. Right. Tell me what was that like? And you mentioned earlier that you have experience in real estate. So talk to me about how you gathered all this information, how long was the process, and what did that feel like for you? Well, basically everything was experience, personal experience. Uh, going to several closings that I was involved in for my own purchases, uh, signing several contracts, sitting in on purchases that others have made, um, closing certain deals when I was renting apartments as an agent. Uh, it's pretty much all experience. And I was able to simplify it because it's not difficult. It's just that nobody's teaching it to us. So after you purchase the first one and you sit back, you realize that it's not as difficult. It's just that you didn't know. So I was able to simplify it because I realized that it's not that difficult. It's not as difficult as some make it out to seem. And once it's taught to us, we master everything that's taught to us. But the thing is, nobody's teaching it to us. If you can read what I put in that book, you'll be able to master it. And that's 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 the thing. You know the saying that uh, they, I don't I don't want to uh, mess up the quote, but put something in a book if they don't want us to learn about it. If you if you read my book, it would be plain as day. You would realize it's not as simple. You would formulate a plan and you can execute. But the, re the way I was able to simplify it was because of experiences, both good and, and bad. Awesome. 
So in preparation for this conversation today, I, um, I was curious as well. And um, I know that there is such a wide gap between home ownership for folks who are Caucasian as opposed to our black and brown communities, right? Yeah. And I went to um, USA Facts and they published this data back in um, July of 2020. And I was just like blown away when I saw the stats because basically what they're saying, um, Americans was 73.3% compared right. to 42.1 black. Yeah, black. Caucasian Americans, 73%, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And the Hispanic and only 42.1% of black Americans actually own property. Right, right. It, it, it probably had the same effect on you that it had on me when I found out our average age to buy our first house was 48 years old as of 2018. That And I had already started writing the book when I found that stat out. I happened to be on YouTube um, and the, the I don't want to misquote the name, but it's the Real Estate Agency of uh, America. And he was talking about black ownership and he mentioned that stat. And I, I was blown away. I was like 48 years old. I included it in the book where I talk about when my father was 48 years old, he was already a grandfather. And you you can get such a head start the earlier you purchase a house. So I, I understand 100% what you're saying about that stat blowing you away. Um, when I think about... blacks in general mm -hmm. are colored folks and so I'm, I'm a social worker I work right. in child welfare and I remember going into lower income housing to do home visits and stuff like that and I remember saying to myself I was like totally blown away the very first time I did that as an immigrant coming into this country um, because I know how much, as a Jamaican, how much we value our property, how much we value ourselves as human beings. And then to walk into these uh, projects, quote unquote, and to see how people treat where they live, anything. Mm -hmm. That in itself just made me think, and I did a double take, and I said to myself, where are our priorities? That was a question that I asked myself. and. When are we going to realize that we have control, we have power, but we got to want it? Because I think like the systems here, I believe, and this is just my personal opinion, mm -hmm. I feel like the system from, from welfare, HRA, it's an oppressive system. Okay. It's designed to keep us that way. Right. 100%. The projects itself. Yes. They're pro it was a project and it worked. Yeah. You know, because in America, we weren't always this way. Right. Right after slavery, we built towns, we built cities, we had our own banks, we had our own insurance companies, we had property, we had land, we had farmers. And this is right after slavery. Some of these owners of these things couldn't even write English properly. They couldn't read English. But what happened was in the 60s, we got integrated into their school system. Their school system taught us to go to school and get a job to put on a suit and tie and that equaled success. Meanwhile, we had wealth. So we're abandoning our wealth for the suit and tie because now that's told to us that that's success. Go to school and get a job. They left out, buy houses, own property, open businesses, land. They left those wealth building uh situations they left those out in the go to school and get a job so we you had people leaving the south leaving land leaving property to the big city dream suit and tie and equal success so we own more houses in the 60s than we do today if you think about it it's crazy how could in this in the 60s we didn't have any discrimination laws protecting us we didn't have any housing laws protecting us so how did the people that didn't have those things uh, not too far removed from slavery, wasn't quote unquote educated. How were we building those cities and towns? No political help. 
you know so we were on the way up and we got integrated stopped started going back down so it's it's by design it's 100 percent by design the more i hear the more i listen the more i read and i talk to people i network and i i hear these stories it's so disheartening to me and then it goes right back to our conversation today about knowledge and about information but we have to want that so talk to me about a time because i know like you are one of the few who figured it out mm -hmm. right and recognize that you don't want to be a part of this design and you don't have to be a part of this design um but what was that defining moment for you that made the light bulbs go off it made the light bulb go off yeah it it had to be one of my uh, co-workers got injured on a job and he broke his wrist and uh, the boss brought him back to work and uh, promised him if he didn't just don't sue me, you're going to have a job. He didn't sue the boss, he brought him back to work when he healed up and fired him 90 days later, laid him off 90 days later, because after the 90 days, you can lay them off. So he tricked them into not suing him, kept them for the 90 days. Once the 90 days was over, he got rid of them. At that point, I realized that you can't let anybody control your life like that. You, you, you did him a favor because you got injured. You could have gotten a help, a, a hefty check for the way that you got injured, but you had, you trusted him and he totally betrayed you. So from that point on, I said, I have to, I have to be in control of my own, my own uh, destiny. Like I'm never going to put my faith in a boss or a job's um, hands. If I can't make it work for myself, I'm going to figure out, I have to figure out a way to make it work. And that was before I even considered writing. That was just my mindset. The writing came up, came, came further down the line because this was early in the 2000s. But I knew I, there had to be a change. Okay, so you knew you had to be, a, um, there had to be a change. Yeah. And how did you start that change? I started the change, I want to say in 2016, mm -hmm. I um, started working off the books. And I realized how much income how much money I was able to put aside working off the books. I was working on the books also, but I was doing extra off the books. And when I realized the amount of income I was able to put aside, I realized that just working for one job or working for a person is never going to get you to the position that you want to be in. And that was, uh, that was 2016 that I start, I started that process. And that was after I penned my first book. So my first book was already penned, but my mindset was still, oh, I got to get up every day and go to work. I got to go to work. I got to go to work. That's the only way. But it's not until I started working off the books, which you weren't supposed to do, that I um, realized that, no, there's more to this than just working for somebody and looking for a pension. So you got the concept of multiple streams of income. And you right. Read it. All, right. All right. So I'm going to take you back to uh, initially uh, your introduction and talking about the fact that you're an independent author and you literally control every aspect of your book. Your book is not even an Amazon. Right. You control your marketing. You're doing everything solely by yourself. Now you are a full time right. author and an advocate. We'll get into the advocacy aspect of it in a few. But I want to understand your drive and your willingness to jump, because that's a risk that you take. No way. Talk to me about that. Um, you have to believe in yourself. You, if you can't expect anybody else to believe in you if you don't believe in yourself. Like I know what I have is powerful. 
I know what I have is worthwhile and I know what I have is unique. So there's nothing that anybody can do or say to change that mindset. So that's that's what I go off of. I, I pray to the father for strength. I thank the father for strength to be able to go outside and push my product. I, I thank the father for having given me the courage to go and stand out in front of people because it's a thousand no's to one yes. <laughs> but that one yes is worth it. You know, people walk right by you like if they don't even see you. But that one yes is worth it. And I I, I thank the I thank the father like I, I, I a friend of mine says um, she says uh, prayer and push. That's 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 what I do. That's what I do. You pray and you push. What does a typical day look like for you? I would get up maybe between seven and eight, and I would um, post my my ads from the night before because I pre I, pre I prep them the night before. Okay. So probably between eight and nine. I would uh, put the ads on my multiple pages that I have. Uh, and then I would get ready to go out on the street and push my books until about two in the afternoon. Two in the afternoon, I would go back home and get ready to go to my three to 11 shift. Your three to 11 shift, where is that? That's with transit. That's with transit? Yeah. Got it. So you have a, like a very long day altogether every day there's no there's no short days <laughs> every day <laughs> you push and you pray yeah i'm so happy to hear that and um that's like music to my ears uh because it's also a reminder that nothing in life worthwhile is easy no, it takes possible. dedication it takes consistency mm -hmm and a lot of positive self-talk because right. when the moment gets so tough and you feel as if why am i doing this again mm -hmm. and like you said the consistent knows that you get mm -hmm. so is it every day that you do this or do you do like a monday to friday what does your schedule on the road look like and do you change locations um how do you do it what does that look like I go, I go all over the city. Um, I try to go out as much as I can. Uh, I go downtown Brooklyn. I go Flatbush and Church Avenue. I go uh, Eastern Parkway, and um, I go to a lot of. I go to Prospect Park. I go to a lot of um, pop up events like uh, Black Black like the event that I met you at. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I try to go out. I try to go out every day. I try to go out every day. And what you said is important uh, about this talking to yourself mm -hmm. because you can get all the mentorship. You can go and join all the classes, the inspirational videos. The <laughs> you can do all of that. But it's what you do when nobody's there. It's just you that's going to get you to the level that you want to get to is is if you can't motivate yourself then all the talking and all the coaching that they do is only going to take you but so far you have to it has to be in you to get up when you're tired to go out there it has to be in you to when you're tired to write it has to be it has it has to be in you if it's not in you then it's not going to happen nobody else can do that for you absolutely um what would you say is your greatest inspiration to date? The greatest inspiration to mm -hmm. date. Hmm. The greatest or, inspiration. To date. Let me let me rephrase that. In looking back on your journey from where you started to mm -hmm. where you are today, what's your biggest achievement, or what's something that you've learned that's so profound? keeps you going and that you hang on to something that keeps me going is yeah. the re the reaction that i get from people when they read my book like that that it not only that when they see my book the reaction that they get 
that I get that people give when they see my book that definitely encourages me the responses the reviews that I get that that encourages me like um, um I've gotten so many reviews and so many responses and it never gets old like it it it, it makes me push even harder because I know there's so much more people I can reach that haven't seen my book but that's the the motivating something that I go to, to for motivation is the responses that I have gotten as far as inspiration um the most I have a few people that have inspired me greatly that um still inspire me to this day uh Anthony Lally who I speak about in um the Blacks in America book a uh, broker uh he inspired me from back then because he was at such a young age and he had purchased so many properties owned his own brokership but even to this day he was over 300 pounds now he's in bodybuilding co competitions and he's in his 40s so from that inspiration to what he's doing now is just totally on another level i talk about him in my book um there's another brother uh Derek grace that he's in his early he's in his mid 30s early 30s and he just changed my mindset totally i signed up for a class with him for 299 dollars it was a one-on-one -on -one session and again i was you know trying to mark learn about marketing my book i had questions for him and right off the back he introduced me to his printing company saved me thousands of dollars you know but aside from what he's taught me just his mindset of we don't need them they need us and we can do it together is 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 it's is, is amazing and for him to be so young to have that knowledge i tell people all the time age is just a number and wisdom can come in any age any age wisdom can come in. you know so those are two those are two men that it, that inspire me up until this day those are they play a, a great role then i also talk about uh a co-worker of mine tanaka samuel he's the first person that put into my mind to go and try to get an extra property to try to become a landlord he's the first person that put it in my in my mind when I was young in the trade you know so I, I've had I've had people that I've been around and interacted with that to this day inspire me wow that's that's profound and you know I hear that you're saying it's so important for us to stay grounded. Yeah. It's so important for us to recognize that we got to make sacrifices mm -hmm. and we have to keep faith and hope alive right. and keep praying and just keep pushing because it keep will pushing. happen. Um, can you describe or just tell me about a time when you felt that you wanted to give up or it was just too much? And you were like, what is my next step? How were you able to get through that moment? And tell me about that moment. Uh, when it came to the writing? Just in general. I, just in general that I wanted to Anything give Anything that pops out. I can't really recall a, a moment when I wanted to, to give up. Um, you... I've had I've always I've had I have mouths depending on me so giving up is not an option like it's it's, it's not even a thought to give up because when you have when you have people depending on you you what are you going to give up you're going to turn to them and say I'm sorry you know we can't we, <laughs> it can't it can't happen it's not gonna go on I, 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 uh, it's, it's it's not an option giving up is, is never an option how about moments of doubt or moments when you feel like I am I'm busting my ass, I'm doing all of this? And probably even like days when you're on the streets trying to sell books and you probably make one sale or I don't right. know if you have days where you don't make any sales. <laughs> what does that feel like to you? Oh, that, you that, that, that happens often. <laughs> you, know, you, get, you get out there and um, people give you discouraging words or... You know you, you but you know you can't you can't dwell on it like you 
it happens because doubt doubt happens you know but you can't let it consume you you have to be able you have to be able to brush it off and then you think back to what what i do is i think back to the positive like i i i've had people leave me 40 dollar tips i've had people leave me 30 dollar tips so with that moment of of doubt like if somebody says something that is negative or i or i get a negative thought because you're out there you're entertaining energy so it's it's negative thoughts are gonna happen because of the energy that's surrounding you especially if you're in a negative environment you know there, there's times i'm out there and i'm with my books and fights are breaking out police are chasing people like you're if you're in an environment where sometimes there's negativity around you doubt is going to creep in but i i have to focus on the positive that 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 i've done and the positive that i know i can achieve and what what that what the end goal is that's what i focus on i i, I don't let so i think we just lost our our guest um just picking up from where he left off he was basically saying that he doesn't focus Oh, I think I lost you for a second. Oh, I was still hearing you. Uh, oh, you're still hearing me? Yeah, okay. I was still hearing you. <laughs> I was hearing you. All right, sorry, you'll have to repeat what you just said, if you don't mind. What was the last thing you heard? Do, do you remember? What What was the last thing I, you heard me say? I, that's so bad. That is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I, you asked when doubt creeps in. When doubt creeps in. And you were right. saying focus on the you focus on the positive not the negative right. when there's so much negative energy around you yeah right 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 there's so much negative energy around doubt is going to creep in it's going to creep in you hear snide remarks you hear uh you hear people that uh doubt themselves and they try to push that doubt on you but being around people you're going to get you're going to you're going to absorb some of that energy some of the negative energy but also you absorb positive energy. Like I get, even though the environment may be negative, I get so much positive energy when I'm out there. I get more positive energy than negative energy, even though there's it's more no's than yes, because the positive energy that comes is so, it, it, it lifts you up so high. Like you, you absorb it and you, and you, and you go with that. Like every, I, I tell, I've told stories that every time I go out, something amazing happens something amazing happens so that that keeps that keeps me going it keeps me going it's not often that you see us out there with physical books on a street corner you know and a lot of people do appreciate that and they comment about that awesome what does sales look like for you for you how is the it, sale with your book how is it it they vary if it, it varies you know some days are amazing other days i've walked out of there with three dollars in in tips but i know that uh those days that i haven't done well like if i go to a pop-up shop and i don't do well it's networking is networking and networking is a big key it's not always about the income the income was uh was was great because i was paying i'm paying for my daughter's school out of pocket a nursing school i'm paying for that out of pocket so it, the income is a big part of it but that's not all there is to it like you meet some amazing people out there and that uh, you have to I, I i realize that it's much bigger than just the sales of of the book that's a great part of it but it's much bigger than just the sales it's especially at at this point because i want to get into the high schools to be able to teach 11th and 12th graders that's another reason why i made the book so simple after 11th and 12th grade they're in the real world some of them aren't going to college a lot of them aren't going to college. That's the, now they're in the real world. So I simplified, I simplified it enough that 11th and 12th graders would be able to understand it. And I could try to change their mindset on home ownership, even if their parents didn't own homes, even if their parents own a home and never taught, taught it to them. If I can get into those schools and start to talk to them, they don't need their parents' guidance on it because they have this book now. Now they may know more than their parents ever knew. They may purchase before their parents. They can teach their parents now. You know, so it's it's become a bigger mission than just the book. It's become this information has to has to get out there because it's detrimental. Um, if you remember, I talk in the book about two thousand dollars a month rent 
being forty eight thousand dollars in two years. Two years, yeah. If I can reach high school students and let them understand that economic those economics, then we can change their mindset. Now they realize, wait, let me stay home, let me downsize a little, let me stack some paper. You know, I'll be able to travel a little, I'll be able to do this and that. I won't be locked into paying somebody's rent and set myself back 15 years. That's the mindset I want to try to get the younger folks into. Mm -hmm. So I'm going, um, one of your chapters, naysayers, because you were talking about negative energy, um, something yeah. I highlighted and it says, if you listen to naysayers, you won't accomplish anything. Even if you don't reap all the benefits of the house, your children will. And who doesn't want this for their children? Um, that's profound because I also believe that we're on this earth to be of service to others. Right. And our children are future men and women of tomorrow. And it's our responsibilities as adults, even if we're not a parent, to model those behaviors, to nurture that and let them understand that we are preparing them because children, they pay attention. Children live it. what they learn and they learn what they live. They when see you, everything. <laughs> When you think they're not looking, they're on the sitting and they're absorbed. They're like sponges. Right. They absorb everything. So why not feed them positivity? Mm -hmm. Why not feed them wealth and health? Mm -hmm. So because it's really um, devastating for me when I've had the opportunity to talk to some of my youths and I'm like, hey, so where do you see yourself? What are your plans? And some of these kids actually look at me and say, they want to get an apartment in the projects. Mm. Well, there is nothing wrong with the projects. I'm not mm -hmm. knocking the projects because we have to start somewhere. Right. And I think this is like, so important for me to underscore here that at some point in our life, we may hit rock bottom. At right. some point in our life, we're going to have a difficult patch. At some mm -hmm. point in our life, we're going to have to accept help. But right. when do we just settle for that set? When do we start craving and become hungry for more, knowing that it's so much more to our lives than just getting up every day and just living? It it has to come from within because you're, you're a product of your mindset. You're not a product of your environment. If your mindset is, I want better, then you're going to get around people that are going to show you better if your mindset is this is all that there is then that's what you're going to get and this is why reading is so important and this is why people so many people are followers because they don't read you can you become a leader and you can lead people when you read just a little bit because the majority of people aren't reading <laughs> you know you if your mindset is i gotta get to another level you're gonna get to that next level if your mindset is Oh, this is what it is, and that's exactly where you're going to stay. Um, I want to touch on something that you mentioned with um, with parents. Uh, I talk to a lot of Caribbean folk when I'm out on the street, and I talk to them about the home buying process, and I get a lot of responses from them. I have my house back home. I'm not buying a house in America. My house back home. I'm going back home. I'm going to live back home. And I understand that you want to get back home, but the kids and grandkids are not going back home with you. You need to learn this process so that you can show them what it is to survive here. Some of them have never been back home. Some of them go back home and they hate it. So they're not going with you to live back home. They're going to be here. You have to be able to show them. And, you know, some of them dis disregard my 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 talk to them like, oh, that's their problem, you know, which is which is sad. You know, we could laugh. We laugh. But. It's really sad that that's their mindset, but they have to understand that they're, they're, we have to start to think generational wise. Not everything is gonna be that I'm gonna reap the benefits out of. I need to learn how to do this because we were given, we, 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 we were at a disadvantage. The others had a head start. So it's gonna take a while for us to catch up. But if we're not willing to learn to show the ones coming up, we're just going to keep going backwards. Absolutely. Um, and what is your greatest achievement as a father? 
so far as my two oldest leaving school without student loans. That's I think I think that's that's it hasn't been easy, but I think that's I think that's my greatest achievement is them understanding why I push the way I push and them so far because they're not 100 percent done but so far the amount of time that they put in is all without student loans it's it's, it's big you want to be able to give them a give them a head start and it's taken a lot of sacrifice but you know i i think they're worth it if i didn't think they were worth it i wasn't going to do it <laughs> you know in reality you have to be honest with yourself like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna pour into an empty vessel you know yeah i would still communicate and try to show them but i wouldn't take my time my uh because you don't get time back yeah. so I, I wouldn't take my time and invest if i didn't think they were worth it and they definitely to me it, it, i don't regret it at all it's actually fun meeting the challenge <laughs> to be able to, to to help them out that way absolutely awesome what does the process look like for you um, if someone out there is probably thinking they want to publish a book but they don't understand the intricate details because people see books being published right Right, but right. they don't understand the nuances and all of the work that right. goes into it. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Sure. The real work starts after the book is finished. It's the, that's when the real work starts because you have to market, you have to promote, you have to network, you have to get in front of any and everybody with your work. Like I, I have the luxury of talking to a lot of authors because of the route that I chose. I chose the uh, Master P, sell your book out of your trunk, my uh, style of doing it. So I'm out there interacting with people on a regular basis and I've run into so many authors. And the common thing, the one common thing is that so many of them are not selling books. We, 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 have, this, we have this mindset that if one person does it this way, that that's gonna work for everybody. And that's not actually true. The if you have a thousand authors and all of them are selling one book, the only person making money is Amazon, because Amazon has all of them thinking that Amazon is the only way to sell your book. You know, and I run into so many authors that are complaining that they're not selling their book. There, so many authors may have given up because they have a beautiful story, but they're not selling any books, and they think that that's the only way. Uh, my editor, I went through three editors. No, I, I, I went, yeah, my third editor, she doesn't edit anymore, but she's actually teaching the self-publishing process now. So um, I can give her information for if you wanted to share it with up and coming authors. She's amazing. I'm disappointed that she's not editing anymore because I have some stuff coming that, and it took me a while to find the pro a proper editor, but she has a program from beginning to end that she's teaching the self-published published, uh, method. And then I also have a, a, a book coming out that's teaching self-published authors what to be aware of with publishing companies because there are a lot of publishing companies that are taking advantage of self-publishing authors. So I have a, that's going to be a short ebook with, again, with personal experiences that I went through, what to look out for and especially if you try especially if you're trying to do it on your own you know so like you 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 have to give it a hundred percent if you're not going to give it a hundred percent then this is not this is not something for the for the for the light-hearted it's not something for people that think that it's just going to happen you have to make you have to make it happen you have to make it happen love that you gotta make it happen um i also checked out your youtube page and you basically talked about like your your goal is to give back to our youths 
oh, yeah. tell me what that is looking like for you already and um where do you see yourself a year from now as an advocate uh and that again wasn't the intention when i started writing like it's it's blossomed into something so much bigger than i thought i just knew i had an amazing story <laughs> but in going out there being invited to schools talking to you i realized that it's much bigger than my book uh we, we're talking about my fictional book now um we i went to a, i went to a school in georgia i was invited out to a school in georgia and i'm talking to the students about my fictional book and we're talking about the marvel movies and like three quarters of the class had seen the marvel movie we were discussing if we liked it or not none of the it was a spider-man movie none of the students in the class knew that spider-man started as a comic book they knew who stan lee was they knew who the spider-man movies were they didn't know that it started as a comic book. When I went to teach that class, Spider-Man had made $847 million at that time. So I asked them, you know, who would like to make $847 million? Everybody put their hands up. Why aren't our youth being taught creative writing? You know, it's a market that we're locked out of. We, we, we go, there's three C's. There's the consumer, the content and the creator. The content comes from the creator and both of those are pushed to the consumer for the consumer to consume. We're, the, we're, the, we're, the consu we're on the consumer end of it. We love to go to the movies. We love to buy the popcorn. We love to buy the soda. We love to sit on the couch. We love to stream the Disney shows. We stream on YouTube, Hulu, Netflix. Those are all winning because they have content. So why are we just consumers? Like who has a more creative mind than a 12 year old? Who has more creativity than us? Who has a more creative mind than a 10, 11, 12 year old? Why aren't they being taught to creatively write? It's a trillion dollar industry. The Marvel movies have made 25 billion on their movies alone. That's just Marvel. So you throw all the other movies in there from one book, you could get a prequel, a sequel, a trilogy, a TV show, merchandise, plays, like the list goes on and on. When they come into our neighborhoods and they film movies and TV shows, you only see them. You don't see us on the production team. Cameramen, sound systems, like there's a whole market out there that we're, we, we, we haven't even begun to scratch the surface. And when I get to into the school, into schools to talk to youths, or even if I'm standing out in the street and I'm talking about my fictional book, because that's my baby, it's become more than my baby. It's become, you need to start to expound on these kids' creativity because without content, there's no Netflix. Without content, there's no Disney. So why aren't we being pushed? And why aren't our youth being told to to tap into that creative mind? We're, we're more than just athletes and rappers. Those are great careers, but we're more than, we're more than that. If I can pay... If I can pay an athlete a hundred million dollars, how much how much do I owe? How much am I making? When you write, you can copyright, you trademark, you that's ownership. Now they have to come to you to pay you for your work, to use your work. That's your property. That's it. So it's become it's become much more than just my my book. It's become I need to open up these children's minds to being creative and I, when i talk to the parents i tell them talk to them see if they have some creativity in them try it you know the parents the parents have dropped the ball because they've made reading a punishment you know the the the, the turn off the tv and go read a book <laughs> or turn off the video game and go read a book now you're making a child hate a book because i was doing something fun and you stopped me and now <laughs> to go read and I don't see you reading. You're telling me to read. I see you struggling. You're telling me to go read. Why didn't you read? You know, so they, they I, I, when I talk to parents, I try to tell them you have to be more creative. One creative way that I explain, explain to them to try to get children to read is challenge them. Find a, find a movie that they, that they like. See if it had a book about it first. I guarantee you the book is going to be more interesting. And then make a deal with them. If they enjoy the book more than the movie, you know, you go out, you go out to eat, or you go to the movies, or something like. 
get creative with it but turn off the book turn off the tv and go read a book is barbaric man like <laughs> you're not going to get any results with that absolutely um well kevin it was such a pleasure having this mild conversation mild yet so powerful conversation um thank you so much thank you for sharing your story and one of the biggest takeaway for me and i hope that my viewers will also when they get a chance to view this to understand the importance that of consistency dedication making a plan and not giving up you got to keep pushing even when it's so difficult you just got to tell yourself it's okay or reflect on a time when you had some great laughs Mm -hmm. Whatever it is to get you through those difficult moments, because none of us will escape those times. It's all necessary. At some points in our life, we all went through something, but you could grow through it and you learn from it. So thank you so much. It was Thank a pleasure. <laughs> and what final words would you like to say? And also tell the viewers where they could find your books, where they could find you on social media, um, and any plug that you want to put out there. Just take this. We have a few more minutes before we wrap this up. Just okay. tell the viewers what you would, what's on your mind. Okay. Uh, touching on what you were just speaking of, never giving up, your circle means a lot. If you have a circle that is not encouraging if you have a circle that's negative if you have a circle that's not about anything then more than likely you're gonna follow that 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 path because it's what's around you if you're the smartest in the room you got to get to another room you know you can't have that negative energy around you it's to trim the fat season we don't have we don't have time to waste we, we we've we're already at a disadvantage so if you have people around you that are not about anything you got to get away from them start to get around people that are doing what you aspire to do that you can learn from you know that's 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 my um advice to anybody that's trying to find do better is to get around people that are doing what you want to do what you eat is who you are and we're not even talking about food we're talking about your social media we're talking about your music you know if your social media is just uh fighting all day or negative negativity all day then that's what you're going to be you know you have to there's a per you can do a purge of your social media and start to follow people that are giving positive uh positive positivity you know that your social media account can totally turn your life around if you if you get follow the right accounts you know but um i'm sorry if i, I talk too much i do tend to babble on a lot but you can find me this is let me talk a little bit about my baby this is book one in my trilogy i'm taking this to an animated movie this is what started the movement this is dogs of the wild it's about dogs against wolves battling for supremacy all the other animals join in on what side they think is going to win or what side they're forced to join in on it takes place in a mystical forest untouched by humans um if you like acting suspense still a page turner this is going to be the next big thing i've already finished book two it's double the size of book number one i've been getting some excellent reviews we're going to take it to an animated movie and this is what I'm talking about when I talk about the you have to tap into their creativity. It's not often that you see someone like me pushing a book like this, but I want them to be able to see that if I can do it, they can do it. So it's become much bigger than my baby. This is my baby, but it's become much bigger than this. So look out for this. We're coming in the big screen. We're, we're, we're coming. Book one, book two is done. Book three is in my head, and we're coming. Uh, right here, you can find that at www.dogsofthewild.com. Yeah, www.dogsofthewild.com. You can find this book. Uh, here is my coloring book to Dogs of the Wild. This I newly released. Uh, what I did with this one is I'm introducing the characters of the trilogy to younger kids before they're at the reading age of the trilogy. So what I did is I put some crossword puzzles in there. I put some um, mazes in there. I put some fun facts about animals in there. And I put the characters from the book in there. Uh, my illustrator, Derwin Graphics, hooked me up with an amazing coloring book. He hooked me up with some awesome illustrations in here. 
and this is also on the same website so you can check that out my ebook is on there also and then here is the home buyers book you can find at www.18-48.com but everything is done by me self-published independent author and we're going to the top uh, i really appreciate you having me on thank you thank you very much it was a pleasure and um good night everyone thank you all so much have yourselves an amazing rest of the day and week on purpose i'll see you next week bye we are the sons and daughters of the soul we are resilient and forever forward thinking we ask for nothing else than the opportunity to live and to create the lives that we were meant to live we want nothing but an equal chance at options and possibilities the same possibilities and options to live out our potential as our fellow man. We want to be heard, understood, and expressive in our reality. We are the future. We are the creator. We are here.